sacrifice each, each other, Lord, just to uh, protect our freedoms. Lord, we just thank you again, even just by teaching these Boy Scouts, Lord, when they're, when they're young, just to put others first. And Lord, uh, I just thank you uh, just for this past Sunday, Lord, for it being Easter, Lord, and I just thank you again for your son coming to this earth, Lord. We just thank you again, and uh, we just give you the rest of the night. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I have led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Joseph Lesueur. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic of which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We have a few troops here tonight, Mayor, so we'll ask Councilman Cook if he doesn't mind helping pass out the constitutions with us. So as we pass the microphone down, you'll say your name and your rank, and then Council Member uh, Cook will give you a copy of the Constitution. My name is Britton Bryce, and I'm a first class. Uh, my name is Gage Busby, and I'm a tenderfoot. My name is Jack Martin, and I'm first class. My name is Joseph Whitehead, and I'm star. Seth Rogers, and I'm life scout. Garrett Busby, and I'm a star. Shad McKendrick, and I'm a life scout. Joseph Lesueur, and I'm first class. Jacob Peterson, and I'm Bears. Kenneth Lesueur, and we blows. Tyler Rakowski, and I'm a life scout. Nathan Martiris, I'm a star scout. Connor Webster, I'm a life scout. Rex Bromo, I'm a star scout. Adam Rakowski, a life scout. Daniel Jordan, I'm a life scout. Hiram Solano, I'm a star scout. Samuel Holdridge, I'm a star scout. Seth Holdridge, Life Scout. Ethan Compton, First Class. Isaac Clinton, First Scout. Uh, Jacob Frazier, Star. Raxley Lester, Star. Lorenzo Lopez, Second Class. Tyler Eves, Tenderfoot. Kyle Hepworth, Second Class. Um, Chica Woodruff, um, Boy Scout. Perfect. Mayor, we have about 40 future Eagle Scouts here. Anything you want to say to them? Well, to the community, these are some of our finest. And another reason why many are here, as Pastor Hector mentioned in the invocation, we have been blessed in Gilbert tonight to have just recognized two individuals who served in the military and have returned home safely. And that was Specialist Daniel McDonald and Specialist Cody Whitlock. And so to the Scouts, thank you for coming to cheer them on. It's one of our uh, greatest events that we have in Gilbert are our Operation Welcome Home and for the Scouts to be here and see that, uh, these future leaders and individuals that are doing so much in the community. So I, other than just thanking the Scouts for being here and their leaders, uh, I'll leave it at that. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome to go back and sit. <laughs> our Deputy Clerk will now conduct the roll call. Please. Mayor Lewis. Here. Vice Mayor Cooper. Here. Council Member Cook. Here. Council Member Daniels. Here. Council Member Peterson. Here. Council Member Ray. Here. Council Member Taylor. Here. A quorum is present. Thank you. There are two items on our presentations and proclamations, and I, I'm going to just confirm my understanding on agenda item number two, the proclamation for the National Service Recognition Day, was just to um, highlight a proclamation that was made uh, to join other cities and towns across the country. Was there anyone here that was scheduled to receive that proclamation? Okay, so Councilmember Peterson, when we get to two, I'll just have you read it up here from the dais. On number one, we have in council chambers our six pillars of character. And this month, the pillar that we celebrate is trustworthiness. Councilmember Daniels, please. Thank you, Mayor. As council members and town staff, we agree to be honest, not deceive, cheat, or steal, be reliable, do what you say you will do, have the courage to do the right thing, build a good reputation, be loyal, stand by family, friends, and country. Thank you. I mentioned in our study session on Tuesday night that we would move up agenda item 25, which is to talk about current events. And Melanie, do you have something you're ready? Okay, as you come forward, I will also mention that today was a 
for many reasons, another great day in Gilbert. In addition to the Operation Welcome Home uh, ceremony that just took place earlier today, we had many of our finest Gilbert youth here participating in Government Days. And as part of Government Days, yesterday they were shadows to some of our town leadership and, and went to various parts of our community and some went down to the Capitol and were involved in all sorts of great activities. And then today they simulated a town council meeting just like we have tonight. And, and I did hear that uh, Mayor Henderson uh, did a great job and that uh, at any time if I'd like to step down and let Mayor Henderson uh, step in, that he's well prepared and ready to do so. That uh, particular uh, simulated town council meeting by our youth will be broadcast on channel 11 It'll also be available on, on the internet through Gilbert Digital and so you'll get a chance to see that in case you were not here in council chambers we also uh, today welcomed four final candidates for the town attorney position and many in the community had a chance to greet them and hear and see their presentations and so uh, we thank them and that process will continue tomorrow and then by way of uh, uh, coming f up in the next few days. Uh, Saturday, the Feathered Friends Festival will take place at the Riparian Park. A uh, week from Saturday will be the Global Village Festival, which will, will take place later in the afternoon. And then Wednesday night is our Mayor's Youth Leadership Summit. Uh, we invite you to go to our town website, to the newspaper, uh, other sources to see more about those uh, events. And they are some of our finest uh, events in Gilbert. Uh, we also have Councilmember Peterson a week from Saturday, the please uh, we are we are Gilbert day on April 13th and have a number of opportunities on gilbertcan.org that's gilbertcan.org if you want to sign up there's still some empty slots but a lot of people have already signed up so we're very excited and it's going to be a great day of service mayor thank you it is a day of hundreds of volunteers in Gilbert uh, uh, working together for some great projects and thanks for you for your leadership and helping make that happen well, that's, uh, that's kind of the lead-in to we also have some events of Gilbert Gets Out Week, which has a lot of great things to it, so please. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Laura Young, and I'm a recreation coordinator at the Freestone Recreation Center, and I appreciate the opportunity to share with you all um, our enthusiasm and excitement about our Gilbert Gets Out events. Um, Gilbert Gets Out is a coordinated effort to encourage our community to get out and really experience all of the wonderful things that Gilbert has to offer. Gilbert Gets Out Week is a chance for families and friends to get together, be more physically active, create their own personal masterpieces, learn a new skill, and explore some of our fabulous facilities and parks. All of our activities are free, family friendly, and take place at various locations throughout the town. This year, our event will begin on Friday, April 5th, so tomorrow, and will culminate on Saturday, April 13th with our summer camp sneak peek. And new to our events will be their class samplers as well as our summer camp sneak peek, which will provide patrons the opportunity to come out, try our classes, find out, find a class or a sport or one of our other programs that really fit them and their family that they will enjoy. Also new to the lineup this year is the Arizona Puppet Theater, and they're going to be performing The Little Red Hen at the Southeast Regional Library. And Rich Ale is going to bring his slithery friends out so that we can all enjoy some reptile adventures. And that will be at the Freestone Recreation Center on Monday, April the 8th. Always popular is McQueen Park Activity Center's Earth Day. Our Earth Day celebration features the opportunity to allow patrons and participants to interact with different um, town departments so that they can learn new ways to become green. We also have arts and crafts made with recycled projects, with recycled um, materials, and face painting, games, and much, much more. Other activities that we are going to be offering as our Wiggle Worms Adventures, Family Craft Time, and a Build a Rocket Workshop. On Friday, April the 12th, Freestone Recreation Center will be hosting our Old Fashioned Family Picnic and our Club Zumba. We were very lucky last year to have Mayor Lewis join us in our activities, so hopefully this year all of you guys can come out and join us. Our Old Fashioned Family Picnic will take us back in time and will feature music from the 50s and 60s and traditional picnic games such as the three-legged race and the water balloon toss. 
Immediately following our old fashioned family picnic, we will be having our uh, kids club movie night, which we're going to be showing little rascals, again, a toss back to their 50s. And then while that's going on, mom and dad are welcome to join us all for our Zumba club dance party. I really want to appreciate that you guys gave us the opportunity to come out and talk about this, and we'd love to see you, you out there as well as everybody else. So come on out and join us. All right, thank you. This looks like there's just a few activities to be part of the vibrancy of Gilbert the next few days. Thank you. I guess I should add one more. Tomorrow night I am representing Gilbert at the 78th annual Tamale Cook off contest and mayors from throughout the valley will be in downtown Phoenix for the Friendly House. It's a fundraiser for them. Uh, through Gilbert Digital, uh, we did a voting process to find which tamale was going to represent us at this event and it turns out that uh, the votes came in and Nando's. So Nando's tamales will be part of that contest tomorrow and we are looking forward to it and of course, I'll be voting for Nando's first, and we'll see who gets second place, but looking forward to that. On the agenda, we now move to number three, which is communication from citizens. As listed and, and, and noted, documented at this time, members of the public may comment on matters within the jurisdiction of the town, but not on the agenda. The council's response is limited to responding to criticism, asking staff to re review a matter, comment upon, or asking that a matter be put on a future agenda. Vice Mayor Cooper, what requests do we have for communications from citizens? I have one under this item, which is uh, Guy Dreyer. Guy, if, and in this section, if you can state your name, and if you're a Gilbert resident for the record, and then you will be given three minutes to speak. Thank you. Thank you. It's kind of hard to walk in here tonight and see what was going on with Daniel and Cody. My name is Guy Dreyer, first of all, 848 North Gilbert Road. I'm with Pond First. You guys have seen me a couple times before. I came before this uh, committee and looked for some relief here a couple months ago, as well as a, a certificate or a conditional use permit. But as I walk in here and I see Daniel and Cody and, and I see what's going on, I commend you guys for what you do and how, how you're working with your community and your guys. I don't have such a great story. May 27th of this year will be two years that I walked home and got home in my driveway and had a couple chaplains in my driveway to tell me my son wasn't coming home. And, and you know why I say this is not because I'm looking for sympathy from anybody, but I say this because when our young men and women do come home, I want to ask you guys, how are they going to be treated as if when they come in as small business owners in the town of Gilbert, when they try and open up a business in the town of Gilbert? I've got roll shutters on the back of my building to protect the assets of your citizens and of my merchandise. I'm going to court on the 11th to see a judge because we haven't been able to make it work. I've given solution after solution. I've worked with the town. I've tried to do what I can. I put $200,000 into the building. I spent $20,000, approximately $20,000 on roll shutters. I asked for relief. I asked to work with you. I asked you to help me. Let's fix this. Let's work this out. I'm in six different cities in this state. I've never seen such a thing. Recently, I had the fire department come into my Scottsdale store. Why did they come into the Scottsdale store? Because the fire department in the town of Gilbert called them up to make sure we're in compliance in Scottsdale. I don't know what's going on. I bring tax revenue to that fire department. I'm willing to work with the fire department. I have no other problems in any other cities. I've got a lot of other businesses in this state and, 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 I'm, and I'm good to our community. I put a lot of money into it and I get treated like dirt and I'm upset and it's not right. What do our, what do our men and women come home to? It's just not fair, you guys. I came to you, I asked for relief, I tried to work it out. I tried to work it out. I offered to put up roll, uh, manual shutters in there. I offered to bring it down to 49 occupant load. When you have a special building, when you, you, you build codes, you build codes that, that have to have flexibility. We have 10, 15 people in our shop. I, I offered to put a 49 occupant load in there. We will never in our wildest dreams have a 49 occupant load, which would, only, which would then allow for one exit. We will never, ever have that. We have a thousand square foot of retail when you take out all the, 
the jewelry displays and other things we have in there. It makes no sense, guys. We're being attacked. The fire department is calling other municipalities. How can we allow this? I asked for relief for once. I asked for it again. I will, go to the, I will go to court. I have no problem with that. Let the judge decide. But we can't have municipalities calling other municipalities on a witch hunt. It makes no sense, guys. I'd ask you to, to take a look. I got six building permits to get this job done. I did it right. It was approved. If you don't like the shutters now, after seven months, they come in after seven months after you approved it. If you don't like it, guess what? Go pay for it. Put it in like you want it. But I already paid for it once. Why would I pay for it again? You allowed it. Why would I pay for it again? Makes no sense. I paid for it. You allowed it. These codes has flexibility. The building official should be able to have some flexibility in this to look at it with a common sense approach. That's all I'm asking, a common sense approach that if it was like your business, you would look at it and say, does this make sense or does not make sense? Okay, I'm not looking to, for any special favors or anything else. I'm looking for common sense approaches to the business. It took me a long time to get through the billing process. I did it right. I did everything the way you guys want it. It was approved and you changed it after, after, after seven months. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, we'll have this information um, for future contact to our town leadership. Thank you. Next on the agenda, and uh, excuse me for not noting this already, um, we do have a set of car keys that were found here in council chambers, and if you are missing the keys, uh, Chief Dorn is in the back. And were they found? Okay, thank you. We move on with the agenda on the consent calendar. And as listed, below are consent calendar items that may be approved by a single motion unless removed at the request of council for further discussion or action. Other items on the agenda may be added to the consent calendar and approved under a single motion. Um, <coughs> excuse me, from our study session, Vice Mayor Cooper, we had uh, Council Member Cook, who uh, will be recused on number eight. And any additional details you need to give? No, Mayor, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay, please. Move to approve the consent calendar items four uh, through 16, uh, pulling item eight out for separate vote. Second. Okay, with that motion and second, uh, please vote. That's approved with a 7 0 vote, and please continue. And I move to approve item eight as presented. Second. Is there, okay, with that motion, second, please vote. And that's approved with a 6 0 vote. Thank you. We move to the public hearing. We have items 17 through 20. will be heard at one public hearing, at which time anyone wishing to comment on a public hearing item may do so. Comments will be heard from those in support of or in opposition to an item. And in order to comment on a public hearing item, you needed to fill out a form. Um, Vice Mayor Cooper, I see that we have a few. Which items are these for? Items uh, 19 and 20. Okay. So on 17 and 18, we don't have anyone wishing to speak. And to the council, before I open the public hearing, um, did we have any discussion on 17 and 18? Okay. All right, let me, let me go ahead and open the public hearing on 17 and 18. Council Member Cook. Um, on item 18, I know that we uh, used some wonderful talent from our University to help develop some of the graphics, but I just wanted to make a note that um, maybe in the future we might use a format that can be easily editable if we need to make changes because I think some of that graphics artwork uh, is kind of restricting us. So just in the future, as a note that we, um, you know, not to say these will change, but again, just more flexibility and the ability to have it easily done in the future if we need to make some changes in the future. Thank you. Any other comments? I close the public hearing on agenda items 17 and 18 and we'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I move to approve items 17 and 18. Second. Is there, okay, and there's a motion, second, please vote. That's approved with a seven of vote, thank you. I now 
open the public hearing on agenda items 19 and 20. And we had brief discussion on, on Tuesday in the study session. Jessica, if you could please make the presentation. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. My name is Jessica Fierro, and I'm the community development supervisor for the town. Item number 19, our staff recommendations for fiscal year 13-14, general fund appropriations. We do this every year in which we uh, publish a request for proposals from nonprofit organizations in which the town can contract for human services to be provided to Gilbert residents. For this next fiscal year, it is the first year of council's uh, reduction policy. There was a, an amount of $297,000 in general fund available. We received uh, 18 applications for funding and staff is uh, submitted recommendations for funding, including two recommendations for neighbor to neighbor funding, which is the uh, volunteer utility bill donation program. We did uh, issue applications, uh, nonprofits submitted them and staff did review them using a weighted evaluation tool. And you will see in your um, information that the evaluation scores were included as well as staff recommendation amounts. Mayor, I'm happy to answer any questions on item 19. Thank you. Council members, do we have any questions at this point? We do have, oh, excuse me, Council Member Ray. I have a question, but there's more discussion. First. There are some um, uh, requests to speak. Should we do those first? Okay. Vice Mayor Cooper, please. Mayor, we have uh, two people that would like to speak uh, for, uh, and then eight people that are for this item and the next item. And I should clarify that those that wish to speak are also for the next item as well, item 20. Eight people uh, who are for items 19 and 20 who do not wish to speak, but they will. We have their information here, and we'll note it for the record. Okay. So, uh, Jessica, why don't we? You talked about 19. Why don't you give the brief overview of 20? Because I do see that these are noted to talk on 19 and 20, and so the the public is aware of. That's the overview on 19. Overview on 20, please. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Council. Item 20, our staff recommendations for fiscal year 2013-2014, Community Development Block Grant or CDBG appropriations. This is federal funding that is received uh, by the town to provide human services. We also issue a request for proposals to nonprofit organizations to provide those services to Gilbert residents. We are anticipating receiving approximately $750,000 in next fiscal year for CDBG funds. We received six funding applications. Again, staff used an evaluation tool to uh, evaluate each application. You will note in your packet that the evaluation scores and the staff recommendation, recommendation amounts are included. And I'm happy to answer any questions about item 20. Thank you. Any questions on 20 at this point? Vice Mayor Cooper, let's proceed. Okay, we'd like to call Trinity Donovan and then after Trinity, Gail Dish. And Trinity, welcome as one of our great members of the Chandler City Council. We appreciate you being here. And, and as you saw, if you could state your name and whether or not you're a Gilbert resident for the record, please. Thank you, my name's Trinity Donovan. I am not a Gilbert resident, but I serve as the CEO of Chandler Christian Community Center, and we um, have two programs that are located in Gilbert. And Trinity, I think you also heard in, that you'll have three minutes to speak, and then the buzzer goes off, please. Great, thank you so much. Well, Chandler Christian Community Center is pleased to partner with Gilbert to provide senior programs to Gilbert residents. These programs have been offered in Gilbert for decades. Last year, CCCC began to administer the funds when the former agency chose to focus on other programs. And one reason that we were able to work with the funders 
to ensure these programs would still be provided was because of our past experience with funding sources like CDBG, Valley of the Sun United Way, and other funds. I'd like to give you a quick picture of the impact of these funds as well as, as the leverage that's provided um, with these funds. So last year in Gilbert, the Senior Center provided around 32,000 meals to over 411 participants. Almost 300 people participated in 828 activities with a total attendance of over 7,300 visits. On average, over 120 people per day are receiving meals through this program, either through the congregate setting at the senior center or through home delivered meals. And um, the seniors in Gilbert access these nutritionally balanced meals based upon a variety of reasons. Those receiving the home delivered meals qualify when they have no way to get to the congregate meal setting. In addition to the nutritional benefits, the meals provide other benefits. And one of the most important benefits is, in my mind, is that seniors are able to remain independent and in their homes longer versus needing the assistance of a nursing home. For those who qualify for the home delivered meals, it's far less costly for us as taxpayers to spend $8 per meal for the home delivered meal with a wellness check than the approximately $150 a day that, that we would pay for them to be in a nursing home because they would qualify for those services as well. And that's um, according to Area Agency on Aging Statistics. This also doesn't include the added burden on police and fire when wellness checks are no longer provided by our volunteers. Now that $150 a day wouldn't come out of the town's budget, but neither does the $8 per day that the meals cost because one reason you've partnered with us is because we leverage your funds with Area Agency on Aging Funds and Valley of the Sun United Way funds. Additionally, we're more efficient because we combine the administration of both the Chandler and the Gilbert Senior Centers to maximize these funds. So Chandler money actually benefits Gilbert as well. Over, or really approximately 50% of the entire budget of the Gilbert programs are funded by other entities. And if we take out the in-kind contribution, it's actually almost 60% of the actual dollars. I have um, a few other seniors and um, residents who are concerned with this issue, and I see I'm running out of time. Um, but So I guess I'll end with that. But thank you so much for your time. And I would encourage- Do you, do you need 20 more seconds or? Um, well, I just want to mention with CDBG, I think um, rejecting the funds doesn't solve the philosophical difference that some of you may have. The funds won't go back into the US Treasury or into the wallets of Gilbert citizens. Instead, they'll go into a pool for, um, for Ari other Arizona towns and cities to take advantage of. I think that's an important point as well. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Gail Dish. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm Gail Dish, I'm a resident of Gilbert, and I'm also a senior citizen, and probably one of the newer members of the Senior Citizen Center, as a matter of fact. Um, I'm here to ask that you vote yes on both 19, the human services, general fund human service appropriations that have been recommended by the staff, as well as the community development block grant. And I'm here to say vote yes on these for a lot of reasons. One is I have personal experience with Save the Family in my 30 years in Mesa schools. Uh, we provided adult literacy services with the Save the Family organization, top notch organization to providing um, support to our families who need it. Also, I've lived in this community 27 years I've watched what the Boys and Girls Club has done to keep our youth in this community active, involved, and becoming leaders. And um, I also, the Senior Center is a very focal, important part to many members of this community. I think eight members coming out here to support it and show you that. They just didn't feel comfortable speaking, which I wish all eight of them would have come up and spoke. Uh, and finally, on 20, the Community Development Block Grant, I'm sure you're aware of this, I hope you've researched this, but um, 
it leverages a number of different funds and the area agency on the area the area agency on aging funds typically have not been given if a community did not put in their fair share as well and i've had that experience in the work that i've did in, i've done in mesa schools when we've had grants and the way we've needed to leverage those uh, bringing in dollars from a number of different partnerships and collaboration. And that's what I hear from our town council, that you want to work in collaboration, you want to work um, in this community to leverage partners and work together, and these programs do that. So please say yes to this, thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Cooper, any additional requests? No, Mayor. Okay, and as was noted, there were, uh, I think, another eight cards and so thank you for submitting those and those will go into the record too. We had brief discussion on Tuesday in the study session and then Jessica, <clears throat> excuse me, provided the overview. Additional comments or statements at this point, I think Council Member Ray. Couple questions for Jessica and first Jessica, thank you for doing this. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure you've spent a lot more time than you wanted to do this week answering questions from council members. Um, Referring back to item 19, uh, you, you briefly talked about how we, we received uh, a number of requests for funding and through different uh, priorities and, and different scoring systems, you then ranked each of the different organizations that requested funding. And, and the, the council had given uh, or approved priorities that had, we talked about months ago of uh, priority one was housing and priority two was food and clothing. Priority three, utility assistance, four was youth services, and five was transportation. Um, my question, after all that long-winded speak, is I noticed that in priority one, we had a, about seven or eight requests, and uh, one of them was, is recommended to, to fund all, the, the vast majority, probably 98% of the request. Um, and then there were a number that were granted you know, 50% of the request and some that were 0% of the request. But then we get down through to, to priority four um, and, and Boys and Girls Club, for example, is request, is the recommended f amount for them is about 98% again, and it's a large number. So my, my question is, how is it, how did priority four get so much money when priority two got very little and priority one got very little compared to what the requests were there. How, how did that, the priorities uh, stack up there? Mayor, Council Member Ray, uh, staff looked at a variety of different um, um, they looked at a, a, a variety of different aspects of each application. Um, staff took into consideration Council's direction to um, keep the funding amount similar to the previous year Staff did not recommend funding for any new service or new applicant for this year, considering that it was reduced funding. So we did receive um, requests in priority one, um, as, as well as in uh, other non-priorities for new services. Also, in order with the amount of funding that was reduced for this first year, which was approximately $33,000, Staff looked at across the board on the best way to keep as many services uh, available to residents uh, this first year in funding reduction because we have a minimum funding amount of $5,000. If we were um, able to fully fund some of our priority one requests, many of our other priorities wouldn't have received any funding at all. So staff felt that this was the best way to keep as many services as intact as possible, um, as similar to last year during this first funding reduction, and really trying to minimize the impact to the number of residents served. Um, for example, if uh, Boys and Girls Club, which is in a lower priority, took a much larger percentage of decrease, the number of clients that they serve would be far more greatly impacted or reduced than some of the smaller agencies had they got the same percentage of funding cut. Thank you. I, I guess my, my concern, and this is, 
more towards the council than towards Jessica is when, when this when this direction was given to to reduce the general fund dollars that are given um, the five-year plan 20 percent each year and this is the first year my expectation I think the expectation of the council was we would reduce it by 20 percent each year so that uh, each of the organizations would be able to deal with that cut um, and not do it all in one year or not do it all in two years, but give them time to, to theoretically reduce their need, um, either reduce their need for, for general fund dollars and or come up with other ways to supplement those general fund dollars. And so I'm concerned that we're giving 20% less as a whole, but some of the organizations are taking a 1% or 2% cut in the funding while others are taking 50, 60, 70, 80 percent cuts in funding. Uh, and so my, my concern is over the next four years as this continues to take a 20 percent cut each year, at some point the, we are going to pull the rug out from under these groups because in a year or two when we're down 60 percent, we can't continue to fund them at 98 percent. So they're going to go from 98 percent to 60 percent, 40 percent, 30 percent. And so <clears throat> I guess I'm just saying this for the council. That, that's one of my concerns with this, um, is the, the policy idea of slowly taking this, these funds down each year, I don't know is, 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 is happening with the way that these numbers are written. Thank you. Other comments? Council Member Peterson? Something I <clears throat> wish I'd had time. First of all, I, I, I share that concern. I, <laughs> Of course, I have the caveat that last year I voted against the funding, so my position to negotiate on something I'm not going to vote for is weakened by that. But um, I did have a question, and the application talked about um, there were some concerns with one of the applications. We don't have to name it for you know sake of not embarrassment, but can you explain why, if there's a concern with an application, why would we fund it at all? Wouldn't we just cut it? I, I don't understand that. Can you help us shed some light on that? Mayor, Council Member Peterson, the concern was not um, whether or not the organization could perform the services, but more about the overall impact and benefit that the clients receive by getting that service. Uh, council direction was to look at and evaluate services that help um, residents increase their self-sufficiency, and this particular application did not do demonstrate that. There were a number of areas in the application where there were items that were not demonstrated as well as uh, some of the other applications, so their score was quite a bit lower. Um, so there, there's no administrative concerns um, as far as whether they can handle the funds. It was just more of an impact to residents. Council Member Cook? No, Jessica? Do you have any status as to what our next steps are for the needs assessment and going back to that? Because I know that's something I've been asking for. Um, I, I'm just kind of wondering where we're at with that process. Mayor, Council Member Cook, the needs assessment funding is currently proposed in the CDBG budget, which is the next agenda item. So uh, if that program passes, we will continue to proceed with the needs assessment outline and timeline. If that does not pass, it will be um, council's prerogative on how to direct staff mm -hmm. on how to move forward with the needs assessment. And the timing, assume it's approved, uh, remind us when that would take place. Assuming it's approved, Mayor, um, funding would be available July 1st. Staff is able to do some preliminary um, work on the needs assessment prior to when funding would be available. So um, staff had originally anticipated bringing an outline or at least um, a timeline forward to council um, late April, early May. Okay, thank you. Other council comments? Okay. Council Member Cook. One of the reasons why I bring up the, the needs assessment, um, Mayor, was that I, I had the fortune to um, meet with the leadership of one of our large congregations. And um, there are a large number of our 
residents involved in these large congregations that are really asking the town, you know, what can we do to help? We, we, have, um, we have feet on the street. We have folks with, you know, some extra dollars to provide. And, um, and again, back to trying to figure out how to organize a, you know, a global effort here in the town of Gilbert is still very much a mystery to me because it's trying to get the goodwill and the good hearts of our, our residents and business owners to kind of jointly figure out how to, you know, apply some of those wonderful resources and not needing to, you know, use tax dollars. And I, I'm still trying to put my arms around how to do that because they're definitely reaching out to us in this. And uh, if you have any insight to share and how we can make this all work as a large, you know, family here, I think that would, be, I, I look at some efforts toward that. Thank you. Council Member Daniels. Thank you, Mayor. I um, have seen a lot happen over the last four years when it comes to CDB, CDBG funds and also um, health and human services within the town of Gilbert. And um, we have talked about the needs assessment a couple different times, but as you know, we've been in a, a bit of a financial downturn over the last several years and the dollars needed for something like that um, haven't been available to us as a council. Uh, and we have put other priorities ahead of a needs assessment. I would agree with Councilmember Cook that now is the time for us to, to embark on that. There have been several uh, community organizations who have offered to partner with us um, and a preliminary needs assessment was done just last summer, um, which was essentially um, rejected by the town because of its uh, lack of statistical uh, ability to to really do some prediction for us. So work has been done. There are partners out there willing to work with us, but I think um, decisions have been made by this council to not continue with some of those partnerships. And I would suggest that we do, as Councilmember Cook has suggested, put our heads together and find a great way. Um, it, it's it's a it'd be a new model. We have looked far and wide for the exact proper model, and we don't have one. So back to the agenda item at hand, Mayor. Agenda item 19. Um, I'm ready for a motion. Whenever you're ready for a motion, I think there might be some council members, and I, I do recognize that th from our study session discussion that we would like to separate both neighbor to neighbor and general fund dollars. Okay, thank you. Council Member Ray. Before a motion's made, I, I just want to make my, my position clear on this. And I, I appreciate staff's efforts <clears throat> to determine the recommended funds to give to each of the groups. Uh, it's not an easy task. And, and, and thank you, Jessica, and those who helped you do that. Um, and and I, I am willing to support the plan of the, the drawdown for each of the years that the council voted on last year. I just want to make it clear that I will continue to support the drawdown in upcoming years. And so uh, for the organizations that this year aren't taking much of a, a cut from last year, that that cut's going to come. And so our, the, the policy behind the idea of making sure that these groups are ready and have some alternate plan in place, I, I just remind them of that. Uh, policy because it, at some point it's really going to hit hard uh, because it didn't hit some of the agencies very hard this year and so I, I, I'm, I'm going to support it because it's, it's the drawdown as, as was voted on by the council um, but uh, I just offer that insight for votes in future years. Thank you. Council Member Peterson. Mayor, uh, one of the things I, you know, when we first embarked on this discussion over a year ago now, um, one of the things I try to make as clear as I could is that it wasn't ever my intent, and I can't speak for others, I can just speak for myself, but it was never my intent that we would be able to prove and track dollar for dollar replacements. Uh, the way I understand it, the research I've done, the things I've studied, a lot of these things where <clears throat> the data tells us that when government pulls out of these giving roles, if you will, the private giving fills in, 
lot of that's very informal and by definition government's not doing it so it's hard for us to track. We're not going to be able to measure it as well. I can give one example of where this is happening and I only happen to know about it because of our connection with For Our City and all the work we've tried to do engaging the, the faith community. One of them is just the idea of open table. Bottom line is open table is a model of transforming individuals' lives. Rather than just giving them something, helping them change their lives so that they are self-reliant, they can provide for themselves and their families. It's a beautiful model. I, I, I don't know of a better model. And what's interesting about this is this happened outside of government. This happened basically by faith, the faith community. And there are churches in Gilbert that have already opened a number of tables and they're working with a number of individuals. And I see that movement growing. That grew outside of us. Councilmember Peter, just real fast, and I, Susan wanted to, I, I do think this is pertinent even though it's not on the agenda and it's, it's more a nonprofit example. So uh, with your permission, can Councilmember Peterson explain what open table is just so makes sense. Council Member Peters, I was just getting ready to, I was looking through the list to see if it was there. And it, it's it not. It really is not there and it's not something that can be discussed. Um, I suggest we put it on the agenda for okay. the future. And it's, um, but it is a good my example. And made, my point is made that uh, the plan, I'm talking about our plan, our reduction plan, for me was, I, I never made that guarantee we're going to measure it. I don't expect to be able to do that here in government. And so, I know what the data is, and I know that I trust in the goodness of our citizens and believe that. So, um, you know, I'm going forward in, in faith in that, but not just in faith, in, in active pursuit of encouraging those giving opportunities. So, and we're seeing great results there. Uh, I can't measure it dollar for dollar, but I think those things are happening. So, Thank you. Any other comments? Councilmember Taylor. Thank you, Mayor. As I followed this, um, you know, last year and, and how the council, um, you know, developed things, what I saw was, uh, we, we heard the word partnership, and that's two people or more um, that have a, some type of an agreement, whether it's tacit or not, um, that they would each keep a commitment to do something. And one of the reasons, Jessica, I asked for some of the quarterly reports is because I wanted to see, certainly the taxpayers have done their part this last year, but I wanted to see what our nonprofit groups have done as well, um, because that's part of the partnership. So I, I, I haven't seen those. They, they probably exist somewhere. I mean, I've, I'm very familiar with the nonprofit space in multiple formats of nonprofits. Um, but it, in, in the absence of seeing how you know, they've kept their side of the deal. It, it is hard to, to support and just continue on with, with a program that doesn't have, um, you know, justification in, in my mind. Um, and may, maybe that's there, maybe it's just because I'm new and I, I haven't seen it, but that's, what, that's why I asked it, I haven't seen it. And so, you know, it's, it's gonna be hard for me to continue to ask the taxpayers to pay more for things that I haven't seen um, is, is, has been justified so far. Thank you. Any other comments? Vice Mayor Cooper. Yeah, I'd just like to preface my comments by expressing gratitude to the partner organizations that we work with that uh, do so much for the residents of Gilbert and um, have to come to these meetings. Uh, I, I feel for you, but I, I'm also very grateful for all that you do and I appreciate the partnership that we have with you. And I don't really look at it as uh, something that government is doing. I really look at it as uh, an opportunity with, uh, for us to partner with nonprofit and the, and the private sector, almost outsourcing some of these services in a very efficient way. And so I really do appreciate all that you do. And, uh, and I, you know, I will note at the same time that thanks to the efforts of some here on the <coughs> dais and, and others are, and around the community, volunteerism uh, is on the rise in Gilbert. And I think it's, uh, Wonderful. I think it's terrific, and uh, I applaud everyone who's spent all the time doing all the volunteering that they've been doing, and it's great. Um, the funding drawdown compromise, though, as I saw it a year ago when I proposed the compromise, and, and let me just clarify that it was it's not 20% every year. It's, it's actually a, kind of a sliding scale. It's 10% this year, 15% the next, and it kind of grows with, with the 
and still being five years out, but we wanted to give, give more time. But that, that compromise, when I, when I proposed it, uh, anticipated a new foundation in the community uh, coming together to offset some of the uh, funds that were going to be diminished by, the, uh, the, by our town funds and also increased private giving based on a, a premise that was discussed here. Uh, and as I kind of look at it in the last 14 months, I have seen a lot more volunteerism, but I'm not sure that I've seen, well, I know I haven't seen the foundation come to light, although there's been efforts where that has been attempted. Uh, we haven't made it all the way there. And the private giving, um, I don't think, has made up the gap either, and that's why we still have groups that are here. So. With this vote, we're cutting our social services, if you will, by 10% or $33,000, uh, all at a time when our budget's actually increasing and when we've given raises to our employees and feel, feeling more comfortable with our financial situation. Next year, the cuts are more dramatic, you know, another $50,000 to be chopped off. And to be honest, I'm not gonna be real supportive of that next year. I, I will support this this year um, to, to give uh, some of these efforts a little more opportunity to get off the ground. But my, when I offered that compromise solution uh, last year, my, my thoughts were really that it was contingent upon efforts being made and, and achievements being made on some of these other fronts. So uh, I will vote in favor of it tonight. Um, but, you know, just because the funds are going away doesn't mean the need's going away. And I think that... Um, we need to keep that in mind as we make these future votes. Thank you. Jessica, I'd like to have Don come to the pulpit, please. And Don, if you could just remind us, this is simple, but we have a lot of discussion. Sometimes uh, the details are forgotten. We've, we've had two uh, council agenda items that were approved, and that is the utility bill funds and then the neighbor to neighbor. And let me use, let me round this year as an example to 300,000. As you're preparing next year's budget, there's roughly about 100,000 that would be for additional funds for the utility bill uh, inserts. And then for neighbor to neighbor, I think we've been talking about 12,000, about 1,000 a month. Mayor, um, yes, I believe that is correct, but I would have to confirm, but Okay, yes. in, in that, uh, range. So in the budget that is being prepared for next year, where we do have a drawdown of 300,000, but let me just leave it at 300,000 for math purposes. If this year we had accumulated through the utility inserts and neighbor to neighbor 112,000, is it the concept of its what was factored in for general fund and then also able to use that 110,000. And so for next year, as an example, the drawdown goes down as the council had um, desired. And let me do the 15, let me do it without a percentage, just go down to 250,000 for sake of math. That we go down 250,000, but does that 112,000 get added to the 250,000 so as we continue to draw down that it, if we find other sources, that let's say totals 300,000, that even in five years we have 300,000 to work with, that Jessica would continue to do as she did to evaluate and make recommendations. Mayor, um, that is correct. So as we are looking to increase revenues and the council identifies sources such as the ability to uh, advertise through the utility bills, such as our neighbor to neighbor program, um, with council direction, we can certainly apply that to, towards those programs. Okay. And to Vice Mayor Cooper, when we talked about this last year, that was my understanding and why I was feeling comfortable with the drawdown in that it is a desire to, with a needs assessment, which 300,000 may not even be close or may be too high. May, and, and I have to also echo great appreciation and to, to Council Member Peterson, the for our city volunteerism is just amazing. We have seen some of the faith groups, businesses stepping forward with some financial donor, well, not only the volunteer hours, but some of the needs that um, a nonprofit group may have needed financially has been reduced or taken care of, and, and that's 
very inspiring. So it can happen. It is a challenge, and I am glad to say that a priority that I have set of economic development continues to be a good portion of my time, but also as a council we have said we want to help and in the last 12 months, it's just been more the utility bills and the neighbor to neighbor, and we can continue to encourage neighbor to neighbor, and that can be a source where citizens that do want to help, did Council Member Cook, that can be encouraged, can be talked about, can be solidified so that citizens would be comfortable in giving to neighbor to neighbor. And, but you've answered it, so we can continue as the drawdown comes to find some sources and as, as the need assessment goes forward to have a better feel for what that number needs to be. But I, I think that's, that was the concept that Vice Mayor Cooper you were talking about, that if additional funds come and is consistent with the needs assessment, then a year from now you'll, you'll still be comfortable in, in voting to proceed even if the drawdown has occurred, but if that additional funds haven't come, then you'll have some concerns. So part of to the whole council is to continue to look for ways to meet those needs. I don't have the answers tonight, but I, I know that we made some progress and can continue to look for opportunities. And Councilmember Daniels, you look like you wanted to add to that. Like motion. Oh, you're ready for the motion, all right. So. I need to close the public hearing on 19 and 20. And before I entertain a motion, Susan, I just wanted to clarify from the study session, uh, Councilmember Cook did say there's one of the groups that he needs to uh, not vote on. And so do we vote first excluding that group on 19? Or do we go for the vote and not have him, have him vote for any of it. What I recommended was that you deal with the child crisis nursery separately, take care of that, he will abstain, and then he can join in the conversation okay. for the rest of the All right. items. So I close the public hearing on 19 and 20, and we'll entertain a motion with that guidance. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we approve the general fund appropriation for Child Crisis Center. Okay. And is there a second? I think, may I just clarify that motion? Are you moving that we accept the staff recommendations for funding as it relates to Child Crisis Center? We may need clarification on what that funding level is because I don't think I see them. I'm, yeah, but receiving it. I don't see them receiving any for the for the next year, and so I think that was okay. Uh, Thank you, and Jessica. That is correct. They're not on your proposed um, dollar figure. They would not be receiving any. Is that correct, Mayor? That's correct. Okay, Mayor. Please. Would it be all right if I move to approve the eight thousand allocation from neighbor to neighbor, and then you guys can vote on the rest of it? At we're going to get to that, but oh. we're going to do another. There's a motion and a second on the floor, but I'm going to retract my motion because it's not necessary at this point. I was looking at the amount requested, not the amount allocated. So I withdraw my motion, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And I'm ready to Please. make another motion. I move that we approve um, the general fund human service appropriation recommendation from council, uh, from, excuse me, from staff for fiscal year 13-14. Um, Mayor Lewis, I think there still is a problem because uh, there is a recommendation, or there's a recommendation, I guess, of zero for the Child Crisis Center. And I need to understand if that recommendation of zero is going to be app uh, approved because we don't, uh, Eddie, uh, Council Member Cook does not want to vote on the Child Crisis Center, and that's part of the whole package otherwise. Okay, my, I'm amending my own motion <laughs> to remove Child Crisis Center from the vote and the $8,000 neighbor to neighbor appropriation. Second. All right, there's a motion and a second. And, and Mayor, I'd just like to briefly just explain um, the Child Crisis Center. Um, as I've learned more and more about, um, you know, a crisis that we have in the state of Arizona with 15,000 children that are looking for um, foster they, homes uh, and Councilmember so Cook, you really shouldn't be talking about okay. this. You would have a conflict of interest. Again, I just want to explain why I'm going to vote no or not vote for that at all. Because of your uh, wife's employment. 
Yes. Yeah. So anyways, my wife now works for that organization, so that's why I'm going to abstain from that vote. Thank you. So the motion and second, please vote. That is approved with a 5-2 uh, vote. Thank you. And neighbor to neighbor? Okay. And would you like to make that motion or is that Councilmember Mayor, Peters? I'd love to make it. Please. We move to approve the $8,000 allocation recommended by staff um, being paid for by neighbor to neighbor funds. Second. second. Oh. Okay. There's a motion and second. Please vote. That's approved with a 7 a vote. Thank you. And that takes care of 19. Did we cover the Child Crisis Center too, Susan? Okay. All right, we're done with 19. Uh, 20, I will entertain a motion. Mayor Lewis, I'd like to have just a little bit more discussion. I think there's two. On 20? There's others too, apparently. Okay, thank you. Discussion on 20. Vice Mayor Cooper. First. Uh, oh, and can I interrupt real fast, sorry. On 19, Trinity, the vibrancy of our senior center I miss, I need to get there for a mill and I'll pay for the mill. So just let me know when to come. And I'll, we can invite other council members too up to two more and do it in stages, but we, we so appreciate many coming and the, the senior center is just one of our great assets in Gilbert. And at the top of the vibrancy list, they're there. So thank you. All right, continue 20. Okay, and I'll just uh, try to be brief on this one. I will agree with uh, some of the comments that have been made on on our federal situation, <laughs> budget situation, if you will. I know that our, our dollars that we send to Washington often disappear in a black hole. And it's, it's rare in DC to see open, transparent discussion of where our tax dollars are going. The decisions are made far away from where the needs are uh, and that's disappointing and it's something we need to work on. We, as a country, we need to be more fiscally responsible and we need to hold our uh, leaders uh, at the federal level much more responsible. As I look at CDBG, I think it's a little bit different in, in that really comes down to us having, in essence, more local control of funds that otherwise would be lost in the federal abyss. And so we get to choose how to use them. And as long as we're uh, doing so to increase the vitality of our community. And if we don't have those CDBG funds, yet continue to have those needs, then we get to spend our general fund dollars on those or cut services or cut services somewhere else or raise taxes to cover all of the needs. And so I see, the CDBG funds is our money with us having the opportunity to direct it and to put the discussion where it should be, which is here locally, uh, like we're doing tonight. And again, if the CDBG funds are disappear into that black hole because we've rejected them, the needs of our community haven't disappeared into that black hole. They're still here and present. And so I I am supportive, uh, as I have been in the past, of using them to enhance our community. Thank you. Council Member Peterson. There's an issue I'm not sure we can completely resolve tonight, but I'd like to at least touch on it briefly. Uh, Jessica's been kind enough to humor me in all of my questions. And um, in that process over the last uh, year or so, almost two years now, I've really tried to explore and understand the CDBG formulas, go back to the original language of how they determine how funding works, and uh, I'm not an expert by any means, but my understanding was you have to become an entitlement community to get any funding, and that's based on having a certain amount of, I'll, I'll say, poverty in your community. If you remove yourself from that, as far as I know, that's a direct entitlement to the federal government. You remove yourself. I don't remember reading anything that now the rest of the state would just get more money. It doesn't make sense to me based on the idea that they certify you as an individual community based on your own needs. If we say we don't need it, I don't understand why in what I read that would end up going to other communities and 
Arizona, can you, because you know I've heard this repeated over and over and over again. It'll just go somewhere else. But in my readings, it doesn't seem to support that. So I don't know if you can provide that language tonight, or if not, maybe we can have a follow-up conversation, but it just doesn't seem supported by what I've read. Um, Mayor, Council Member Peterson, um, to become an entitlement community, it is part of the statute under the Housing um, and Urban Development a statute that established this fund. So as new or young communities, um, whether it be a city, a county, or an insular community, reaches that threshold of having, um, I believe the minimum population is 50,000, and you ha do have to have a percentage of, of poverty population, they are statutorily required to be offered CDBG funds. So regardless of what the entire congressional appropriation is of CDBG funds, each year we have new communities that are statutorily required to be offered those funds. So I uh, contacted our HUD rep just to get this clarification so I could cite it to you and I wasn't able to get in touch with him. But my understanding is that if we reject these funds, it will go back into the congressional pot, um, which is then available for new entitlement communities. As the new entitlement communities come in, um, the pot stays the same where it's reduced at a congressional level, which is then filtered down to the rest of us, which is why we see reduced funding every year. It's because there's new communities coming in. So I have not seen any evidence that it would go back to the Treasury either, but um, as soon as I find out that directly from the feds themselves, I'm happy to send that information to you. Thank you for that. I, I'm not, like I said, I didn't fully expect a resolution to that question tonight. It's a pretty technical question, but the bottom line is where we have power, we have responsibility. And tonight we have power over some of those funds. And uh, I don't know that I can guarantee the federal government won't spend it another way. I, I can't make that guarantee, but we can, we can control what we can tr control. And uh, so if we're gonna spend it and participate in that federal spending, that's, you know, that's a choice to be made. But I, I don't think it's a good choice. And I don't think we can absolve ourselves of that responsibility. So I just think we need to temper our, uh, you know, anxiety. If we do that, I, I think we kind of lose our moral position to complain about the overspending at the federal government. We need to do our part. We've got to stand up. It's got to start somewhere. So um, I, I won't rattle on, but that was my comment on that. Thank you. Councilmember Ray? A couple questions for you, Jessica. Um, if this item is not approved tonight, and for example, the Senior Center Nutrition Program would lose that $112,000 more or less of funding, would that close the center? What, what, what's the impact? Mayor, Councilmember Ray, it certainly um jeopardizes the entire center because of the other funding that uh, Chandler Christian Community Center receives on behalf of Gilbert Senior Center, um, specifically Area Agency on Aging. They use the funds from Gilbert as matching funds, which is a requirement to receive Area Agency money, which is the largest portion of funding for that center. So if these funds are not approved this evening, um, it certainly jeopardizes area agency funds um, as it is a requirement from them that the local community in which the senior center is housed must contribute to serving those residents. Whether that completely closes the senior center, I couldn't tell you that at this point, but it certainly jeopardizes it. Have there been any contingency plans or discussions as to what would happen if this does go away? Not in the past. I mean, the needs don't go away, right? We've, we've made that clear. Everyone has tonight. But has any, anyone had any discussions as to how those needs would be fulfilled? Mayor, Council Member Ray, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, two other questions, if I can, Mayor. Please. Is it, <clears throat> would it be possible, Jessica, to approve some of these fund allocations, but not all of them? Say we approve items A and B, but we don't do C and D, and I'm just making those up. Mayor, Council Member Ray, um, that is a possibility. Um, you would be accepting the receipt 
of the entire CDBG entitlement amount. However, we would not be approving 100% of the appropriations. So we could um, not fund all of it. And however, that does jeopardize the town's um, statutory timeliness requirement of having one and a half times our annual entitlement amount on the books, which we've talked about in the past. Um, we are not in jeopardy of that right now. So it's um, I'd have to look at the figures, but we probably could float it for about a year, but then we would definitely need to um, make some decisions on how to use those funds in the future, so not to to be um, in non-compliance. Dr. Member Peterson? Just an informational point, and this helps, I, hopefully, this discussion, because I asked these same questions today. Uh, I called the area agency at, well, I was encouraged to. I won't give credit in case that's not a positive thing right now, but I was helped to call them, and I did, and uh, I talked to them about what would happen, and uh, they said that they would likely pull their funding from the senior center, if you will, and they would try and reallocate to the best of their ability, all divert all those resources into the homebound, uh, the deliveries home bit for the homebound uh, uh, folks who, who need that help. So um, in my mind, that was a very reasonable response that that makes sense. That would be the most urgent need that there may not be a, a great other solution. In fact, one of the questions I ask, and I pose this to staff, uh, I mean, depending on how this goes forward, I don't know what happens tonight, but I would like to find a way, if there were especially homebound seniors that would not end up being covered with those resources that the you know area, area agency on aging dedicated to that, if there was some left uncovered, I would, would like to see if there was a way they have privacy rights, okay? So we'd have to get them to release, but I'd like to see if they could release their information to maybe for our city or someone they trust. I would like to, to have like an adopt a senior program. I would love that. I know that for myself and my kids, and uh, I can't feed them all, but I, we could probably do one, and maybe we team up with another family in case circumstances don't allow us always to be. I don't know. There's, I think there's ways to do that. We've got 60 to 70 homebound individuals in Gilbert who daily receive food. And uh, I think we could absorb that in a heartbeat if we just made the connections properly. But anyway, I just wanted you to know that that's kind of what I heard from the AAA on that. Councilmember Ray? I'll be brief. <clears throat> I, I'm not a big fan of the federal funds. Um, one of my concerns, though, is when we talked about general fund money last year, I think the vast majority on the council agreed that we shouldn't just pull the rug out from underneath. And, and there were some disputes as to three-year versus five-year plans, and we ended up uh, uh, approving the five-year plan of a cut down. And in some ways, in a lot of ways, I think this is very similar, where if we don't want federal funds, if we don't want CDBG funds, then I think that we should, I don't know if having the courtesy is the right term, but to let people know, rather than as they're doing their budget, to say, okay, never mind, you don't have any funds anymore. And we've had discussions on the council, and some council members have expressed their concern with any federal dollars at all, and that, that's fine. But <clears throat> we still haven't ever given direction saying, going forward, we're not going to accept federal dollars starting this date or this, we're going to start taking it down percentages. And so I, I just, I don't think it's wise for the same things we talked about last year to simply pull the rug out from all of these uh, these different groups. Um, and, and, and I agree with Councilmember Peterson's comments of it would be great to adopt a senior, or adopt a family and help out, but that sounds great from the dais, but that's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen in the next few weeks to get that program going. And so if we want to have some alternative, I think that we need to have some time for that alternative to happen. And, and more importantly than time is, is appropriate direction and policy direction from the council. So instead of just talking about these things that we want to have happen, either we give direction to staff to make it happen or we make it happen as a council, but talking about it and doing something are, are very different. And, and it's been said already that some council members have done more than others, and, and, and Councilmember Peterson's probably done more than all of us combined as to getting volunteer efforts over the last few months. But I, I just don't think it's wise to go from funding, you know, three quarters of a million dollars last year to nothing this year. Um, and if we want to set forward a, a policy or direction that says we're going to do a 20% cut or some percentage uh, over the next few years, I think that that would be uh, a lot more, lot more prudent decision than just cutting it completely this year. Thank you. Yeah, Councilmember Cook and then Councilmember Daniels. 
Uh, Jessica, um, I notice we have $106,000 that is not used from last year. If we were to vote no on the, the new funding, will that $106,000 still be available that we could apply to um, the nutritional program? Even though they won't be a full 112,000, it'd be 106. Is that a possibility? Mayor, Councilmember Cook, yes, that would be a possibility. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Daniels. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we receive funds as a community, both from locally, we receive them from the county, we receive them from the state, and we receive them from the federal government. So we, we receive funds at all levels of government. And we can talk about the constitutionality of receiving federal funds, but federal funds come to our state and they are used by our state government. The state then turns them over to the county or the town. And so um, there's a lot of taxpayer shuffling of dollars. I wonder how much that costs. But there's a lot, a lot that goes on in that, in that way. Um, I understand the fear, it's justified, about the federal situation that we are in. However, when I look to see what we do as a community with the dollars that are allocated to us, I think that is our, is our responsibility as a council, is to make sure those dollars are being spent responsibly, that we can account for them, that we stretch those dollars as far as we can. And we at the local level can stretch those dollars farther than any st county, state, or federal program. And it's through partnerships that we do that. On another note, my kids play at our parks on a regular basis in the town of Gilbert. And I oftentimes look at our parks in a very similar way as probably our seniors look at our senior center. And I would not shut down the parks in Gilbert. That is home to the recreation and positive outlets for many of our, of our youth. I would not do that to our seniors. Um, I certainly can appreciate the volunteer efforts that go on in the community uh, without our citizens who work so hard on behalf of this town. Gilbert would not be what it is, and I think we all know that. Um, concepts like adopt a senior program are wonderful, but you have to think about both background checks and safety of the food that you're delivering, and, and there's a lot of different things that we need to be considerate of as we look towards options and opportunities in, in the community to serve. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop trying, but I would urge this council to be very open-minded when we talk about the different partnerships because there have been partnerships that we've rejected as a council. And perhaps it wasn't the right time at the right place for the right cost. But I think that we need to be a little bit more flexible as a council in seeking out those partnerships and volunteer opportunities to continue to help us leverage CDBG funds and other financial opportunities to help serve our residents. I think we have to remember these dollars are serving our residents. These aren't going into individual pockets. We have a nonprofit organization that runs our senior center. They stretch those dollars as far as possible. We have a financial obligation to our taxpayers to spend every dollar that we receive on their behalf in the most responsible way possible. And I see that we're doing that through the programs that Jessica has outlined, through our funding allocation process. I, 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 it saddens me that Councilmember Taylor didn't get a chance to see the financial statements, but those are all part of the process and approval process. And so I, definitely we need to make every effort that we can to make sure that you're getting what you need um, to help make those educated decisions. So that was my soapbox tonight. Thank you. Councilmember Taylor, did you want to make any comments? Mayor, thank you. Yeah. So this is my first time to address this here, and if you'll just indulge a couple of thoughts. I, at my work, I happen to be um, engaging a couple, it's a husband and wife consultant, um, and they're from Bulgaria. They, are, they have legally immigrated here a number of years ago. He's just a brilliant individual. Um, he came over on a Fulbright scholarship uh, to ASU and did a number of projects there, and she was high up in the finance department there. Um, she was actually instrumental in bringing uh, Dr. Crow in at, at some point. He has his PhD. He's an adjunct professor there. 
we, we taught, I, I asked him, I said, did you, you, you must have grown up under uh, Soviet reign there. And uh, he says, yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting contrast seeing some of the trends that we're seeing with some of the redistribution schemes here nationally and what he saw there. And I'm not, I'm not saying the issue here is you know, relative there, but pointing out to the national trends of, of um, you know, redistribution, that's what he, his words was, you're playing with fire in this country. And um, I also reflect on the wisdom that Margaret Thatcher used to say when she was um, active. And she says, the problem with redistribution schemas is that eventually you run out of other people's money. Now, it's easy to say, um, well, we're in America and we're different and, um, and that'll never happen to us, right? <laughs> So, you know, daily, the same numbers are in the papers, that we have $16.8 trillion in our national debt. If you add other things, that number actually grow, grows much higher. But, and, and that number is added, added every year. We have a 3.86 structural debt, and the Senate has done nothing to change that in their recent budget um, that they finally sent out. And... Um, Every day since September 28, 2007, we've added $3.86 billion to our national debt. And, and I, 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 you all know those numbers. You've seen them every day. I restate them to, to add the context to the discussion that the, the money for all of this appropriation doesn't really exist. It, it may be something that Congress passes on a bill and a piece of paper has a number on it. But the United States is absolutely broke at the federal level. The, the local level and the state levels, you know, we have constitutions and statutes that require us to have balanced budgets. But we know the national uh, government doesn't. They're running these massive deficits. And so these allocations, while they, you know, send these pieces of paper that says there's money available and that we can, we can do it, um, you know, it's, it doesn't exist. And we're, we're borrowing money from the Federal Reserve and it's loan money from China. And it, that, that really concerns me. And because what we're doing is we're putting a future burden on our children. And that's really not fair. I'm, I'm not arguing that the nonprofits are not worthy. You know, I personally have hosted private fundraisers for the Boys and Girls Club in Gilbert and raised money and so I'm not against the Boys and Girls Club or any of the other nonprofits because I do those activities on a regular basis, um, you know, as in, as individuals. And, and that's part of the good news in Gilbert is this upswell, this uptick in substantive uh, ways that nonprofits are being funded without taxpayer money. I'll, I'll give you one example of the Small Business Lunch, right? They launched this cause marketing program. And what I heard from multiple businesses was, where are the nonprofits that I can help and support and raise money? And then just even more recently this year, same different forum, same response. These were faith groups. They're asking, where can I help? So th that's where I struggle with, with the um, you know, CBDG because the money doesn't exist I mean, at the federal level. I mean, we're, we're flat broke, and, and to do this is putting this huge burden on our children that they're going to have to pay off in, in huge tax increase with, with tremendous amount of interest. And you think about the efficiency of money that we can do locally if we, if we go with what Councilmember Peterson talks about. If a, if a person gives a dollar to someone locally, they get the 100% of the dollar. But it probably takes two to three more t money to pay it in your federal taxes, to pay the federal bureaucrats, to pay the people all the way down the line to actually get the same dollar. So the efficiency in, in waste in that is, it's very discouraging when we, when we think about that model. Again, it doesn't mean any of these nonprofits, these causes are worthy, but the efficiency I, I think is recognized on the council. The direction is, is healthy. And so that's where I, I struggle with it. I, my, my last comment is really just, I, I do appreciate Council Member Ray's um, comments there about there, there is some considerations with the Senior Center and th there's some existing contracts. So I'm, I'm open to that discussion where, where he's headed on that and um, Council Member Cooks, um, I, I, I like the point, I was gonna ask that same thing. So thank you for doing that. I and mean, certainly um, support um, you know, using some of the existing money there. 
Um, but Mayor, thank you for the time and um, expressing a few thoughts there. Thank you. Councilmember Cook? And again, I, I don't think, you know, we had this discussion last year. I feel, again, you know, the federal government doesn't have the money. But again, as I said before, when we talk about the needs assessment, and I know that I'm like a broken record here, I would like for us, if we believe those are the things that we need to do, let's do it on our own dime. Let's do it with our own money. If we have a policy on this council because of our unrestricted, unreserved funds is pretty healthy, if that's something that we need to take because we make a policy of that, um, you know, maybe we can have a discussion. But taking federal money away to me is, is it, in taking, it's just not the right, right decision at this point to me. You know, I talked to Congressman Salmon. I said the most important thing you can do for us here in Gilbert is to figure out how to keep state dollars in the state and not go to the federal government and then have the federal government send it right back to the state. Let the local states and local governments, you know, manage its own money. So reduce, you know, the federal burden on us. Let us keep our own dollars and then we can be better at doing that. But again, to me, um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be voting no on this, just like I did last year. And, uh, and again, it's if we can allocate the $106,000, you know, if for some reason this note goes through, uh, I'm open to that. Okay. Anything else? Okay. One more. We've all said our piece, I think, and it's apparent that the vast majority don't like federal money. Uh, and we all have, we all want to do things to, to pay for it ourselves and to raise uh, funds to help pay for this, et cetera. I think that this would be a great agenda item for a retreat and or for another meeting to discuss what policy we want to make going forward. Um, but like I said earlier, and I'm not a big fan of federal dollars, I don't think it's wise to, to pull the rug from it today. I would be in favor of moving forward with it, but then creating a policy so that when this very same vote or similar vote comes up next year, uh, there won't be any discussion because the policy will have already been made uh, six, seven, eight, ten months in advance rather than the night of. Thank you. So in other words, a policy, Councilmember Cook might be to have local funds support this, which we don't have that policy in place and we don't have the funds planned in the budget. Uh, so what I'm hearing is you'd like to have that future discussion, you'd be prepared to move forward tonight. Okay, so please add that as future discussion. I think the... Um, uh, the, the other comment I'll make, because I have not weighed in yet, is uh, just have great appreciation for, especially Councilmember Peterson, the comments you've made and the importance of that. And then the Councilmember Cook, from a federal level, as you said, talking to Congressman Salmon, um, as changes can be made, those would continue to benefit the country long term. For, for now, <clears throat> excuse me, we have um, the need to oversee taxpayer dollars best we can at the local level. As a mayor, I tend to probably see more of what's happened with the CDBG funds than, than the rest of you just for various purposes. And I'll give an example. Just a few days ago, um, a special experience where a couple uh, in their 80s came to thank the mayor for what had been done for them through these funds. And it's just heartwarming, but that gets to the whole concept that um, that's not necessarily the, the role of government. And I understand that, and I applaud the efforts again on the Forest City, and maybe even Forest City where we're volunteer connections could consider, realizing there's some constraints with food and different things, but could consider maybe branching out uh, to adopt a senior, and, and things like that can uh, continue to help us. For, for right now, though, uh, my barometer for Gilbert continues to be economic development, and, and that's where uh, these funds are used in a way to build the community, and therefore in building the community, it does everything else for businesses to say we want to be here, for education to continue to thrive, for the community as a whole to continue to, uh, to, to grow and flourish, and our community will get older, and that's why when we've talked needs assessment, the needs are probably going to be greater. And if the federal government changes, I'm all in favor of it, but right now with what we have, we're a board, we're a policy-making group, we're not the professional, the professional is right there, and that's who we put our trust in. 
in addition to as the Constitution says of God, but uh, where working with Jessica, I just have tremendous trust in her recommendations and what she has said and in using the funds. And we may do some tweaking and see things that don't quite work, but uh, back to my barometer again for the sake of economic development, these are items that are blessing the community and making us a community that continues to be attractive to businesses, to families, to individuals. And I just think the risk is very high uh, if we don't have a policy in place to deal with it tonight, it's just too high uh, to do anything but support uh, the funds, in my opinion. And I will entertain a motion. Okay. After Councilmember Daniels. No, I'd be happy to make the motion. Oh, please. All right. I recommend approval. I move that we approve the fiscal 2013-14 community development block grant appropriation as presented. Second. There's a motion and a second. Please vote. That's approved with a 4-3 vote. Thank you. We move to administrative items. And I will not read that section because we just have section 21, which is board commissions and committees. Do we have some reports? OK. Future meetings, I think as a council, we are uh, set to be here tomorrow at 8, with one exception, but it'll be 8.30, and so I won't make comments on, on that, on agenda item 23, report from town manager. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Just a couple quick items. We are in the middle of our interview process for our town attorney candidates. If you are not able to see the broadcast live of the presentations, we do have those on the town's uh, digital newsroom, which you can find on our website, or we will be replaying them on channel 11 tomorrow, so you can catch them there. Also, uh, beginning tomorrow, the town's uh, app that we developed for the Heritage District as part of, part of our tourism activities will be available in the Apple iTunes store for download. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Agenda 20, item 24, report from town council members on current events. I know we kind of covered that at the beginning of the meeting, but Best Council Member. Friends Festival this Saturday at the Riparian. Yes. Right? Yeah. We've got a lot going on this, this weekend. Uh, I guess I could say, too, at 8 a.m. on Saturday, Leadership Class of 21 with Patrick leading the way because he's going to graduate with honors, will be painting the mural uh, just to the south of the American Legion building. And we are coming with cameras. Agenda item 25, report from mayor on current events, and I think we've covered those. And so to the council, uh, thank you. For, and to Operation Welcome Home, the finest event that Gilbert has. So Councilmember Daniels, thank you. Meeting adjourned.